Hallo lieve mensen, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the signs where you can be aware of if he is a narcissist. What are the signs that you're dating a narcissist? What are the signs that in the future you may become a victim of narcissistic abuse? There are a lot of things uh, that can show on uh, the first couple of weeks that you can see, okay, this is really not normal. But if you are in the flow of being enthusiastic and you are in the future faking and you're very happy to meet someone like him and uh, what did you deserve to meet someone like uh, this person and you are very uh, happy about it. And then you can maybe uh, be blind to see the red flags. At the moment you get to know someone, uh, it's normal that you stay in connection with each other but you can hold in count if it's very much if it's uh, constantly texting calling maybe you can uh, confuse that needy behavior and that controlling behavior that he's even though he is not with you he's constantly texting and he's constantly on your mind and you can confuse that with oh he's so into me, he's falling in love with me, oh I'm so lucky. But actually it's not normal behavior. If it's like really you, you can't do anything and you hear a ring or it's, uh, it's seeking connection or he gets angry when you didn't pick up the phone for three times or something when you are uh, somewhere else or on the toilet or something and uh, doing your thing uh, wherever or at your job and you had to take the take the phone off but also is a very big sign is when he wants too high too soon and too much from you from in the beginning so uh, if he uh, wants uh, very much intensity or wants to have sex very soon that's not uh, appropriate for you or uh, he wants immediately have a relationship uh, it's it's too fast and also that point you can think okay this is this is going very very fast that's not uh, that's not normal and as a, especially when you say I'm not really ready for it uh, of course he does his best eh? and you uh, want to believe him so uh, it's sometimes uh, very soon some some people are two weeks and having a relationship uh, some people are two months together and already married so uh, that goes very fast and uh, it's also a sign when uh, when you are together and systematically if he uh, gets to know your friends and then he can say oh I don't like uh, that person or uh, maybe uh, that person is holding you down or it seems like a friend you have but that friend is actually very jealous with you can't you see what uh, what your friends or family are doing with you and maybe you uh, say, said something uh, about your family or about your friends in confidence that uh, that something happened that you didn't like or something but you love your family or you love your friends and you said it in confidence and then he can take that uh, in any time he can take that against you and he can say oh and he make it bigger then he can say okay that person did that and that to you what you what you told me and now uh, yeah I think it's not a good idea to uh, to meet those people again and I think you have to uh, break up with all those people because he wants to have you all for his own and it's all about control. It, it goes so systematically that you're, you are getting gaslight. And at the moment you think he's right. I think maybe he's, he's right. I, I shouldn't go to my parents anymore because at a, at a lot of points he's right. And I have uh, some clients are uh, parents and uh, the daughter is uh, having a relationship with a narcissist. And uh, that was very, very painful for the parents because... Uh, the, the daughter had um, in the beginning she was, had a good feeling about her parents and uh, but he systematically changed her thoughts and uh, he said um, for example uh, because the, 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 the parents uh, see things and they weren't not uh, happy with the narcissist so they say oh is he well is he the the right person for you and uh, should you go on with him and then 
is for him his turn that he can say, oh, your parents don't like me and uh, your parents uh, uh, are um, manipulating everything. So a narcissist projects every time. So everything the parents does, he takes it over and he says, okay, that's not me, it's your parents. And then the daughter gets confused and she thinks, okay, my parents want to make me unhappy. And my parents want to have the control and that all the narcissistic traits that it doesn't belong to the to the narcissist really but it belongs to the parents because um, the parents asked me what can we do it's a very difficult situation because um, if they uh, and they did it before they tried every tr trick in the book and they uh, they express their feelings so in the beginning it was friendly and then uh, at a the point they uh, get very angry and then the mother gets very emotional and thought okay what can I possibly do and she gets very uh, uh, working on her guilt eh? and uh, it's a little bit manipulative but it's out of desperateness that the, that the mother does that so she they tried everything. They, they, they were sad, they were angry, they were, were manipulative and, and nothing works because I said, don't, don't do those things. Eh? You can only say to your daughter, okay, my door is open for you. You are very, very welcome. And you can say, I feel hurt because, eh? and I'm worried. I'm really worried because you have a connection with that person, but it's your choice and I leave it free. Because hold always in count, eh? uh, a narcissist has you as a spider in a web. So they don't want uh, that you have connection with, uh, with your friends and family, with no one. So that you only have you, the narcissist and then he has control over you. And then he, he can manipulate you and he can say, okay, eh, if you leave me, you don't have anyone anymore. And you're all alone and you are so and all those negative words that nobody wants you so uh, everybody is angry at you everybody hates you but i am i am the person uh, that that you be happy you should be very happy to have someone like me because otherwise nobody wants you and if you believe that and you don't um, and you get in an argument with the narcissist then you feel very alone and, and desperate because you really think, because of the gaslighting, you really think nobody wants me. So, and you, uh, if you um, disconnected with your family and friends and you don't want anything to do with them anymore, and later on you, want, you get a very big argument and you get scared or very uh, much the abuse is going on, and you want to go to someone for help, but you don't have anyone anymore because the narcissist makes you uh, disconnect with every uh, connection you have. And that's very dangerous. So as a parent, I, uh, I advised what the only thing you can do is uh, not uh, judging the, the narcissist because that doesn't work. So you don't want to hear anything bad about the narcissist because he's in, he's in hypnotized. And uh, yeah, what, what can you do further? It's uh, they tried everything. So working on the guilt and working uh, very, very, getting very angry, that doesn't make her uh, finally uh, open her eyes and think, okay, they are right. Nee, because she, she gets manipulated all the time. She's always with him. And then she comes home and wow, wow, wow. That she, don't, she wants to go back to him. So that's not a good idea and you can in that case you can just be yeah what you what you can what you can't change you have to accept and that's in this situation very very painful but if you uh, do those things it's just a matter of time that a narcissist abuses her and it's just a matter of time that she can open her eyes uh, and see it's this is abuse it's, it's unfortunately that's uh, most of the time too late because the abuses already go on too long. It's, uh, it, it takes a while before someone thinks, okay, this is not normal. Is this abuse? or is So they find excuses in their mind. Okay, this is not abuse. This is abuse. They find excuses. 
eh? and it's not so bad and uh, so that's the sign it it to- it takes a while before a person thinks okay that's not this is not acceptable anymore and then if you have someone to go to fall back on like your parents or some friends then you have some backup but if you uh, broke with every connection you have and your parents are like that oh uh, we are angry at you and we don't like you and you go uh, as a parent you you're going to shout you can, can uh, manipulate you getting angry uh, you are crying or something and every negative emotion that makes the the child not want to go back to the parents anymore so if if the child is with a narcissist and all the negativity is coming uh, over her on top when you go uh, to your parents why why would you go to your parents it's only making you uh, feel uh, more bad yeah? so uh, then the child doesn't have anyone anymore so the only thing that when a, what the parents can do is say okay we are feeling very uh, disappointed and we would have it would see it uh, like another way and we would like to have someone for you that uh, respects you and is a good person for you but uh, it's your decision and we respect that and hopefully it's going to be for your well but the door is always open for you we love you no matter what choice you uh, make the door is always open so that's uh, just at that time it's heavy eh, to say it but and maybe she thinks that doesn't interest me i have a narcissist and what you say right now uh, the door is open okay i don't i don't care i have a narcissist and we are one and we are soulmates and the only one person i need in my life is him and uh, but later on she will remember what you said and later on uh, she can think uh, because the abuse is coming um, just a matter of time and then she uh, in, at the moment she thinks oh, I have no one anymore she thinks oh but my parents told me no matter what choices do we always love you and you, the door is always open for you so she knows when she knocks on the door with the, with the parents that the, the arms are open for her and so there is someone because it's a victim eh? they are a victim and the only thing you can do is be there eh? and i understand there are a lot of people who are uh, yeah getting uh, stopping a, a friendship or something because they are very uh, they are very done with it because if you have uh, a victim in narcissist relationship and uh, as a friend he or she is coming every time doing her doing her story oh this now i'm going away and it's not normal and and every time she goes back it's very exhausting because it's getting nowhere and it's all also something like a, a, when you are a friend and you're helping and you're saying oh they don't accept this kind of uh, situation and okay so you did all the, that work eh? and and you were laying in bed and thinking about your friend and then suddenly uh, he or she goes back again and it feels like a little that you are betrayed because suddenly uh, she goes back to what those uh, what did it all mean eh? what did all those conversations mean to her eh? and uh, I can I can understand people are getting very tired of it and thinking okay she's hypnotized she's a little bit crazy there's nothing to we can do about it so uh, I'm fed up with it and that happens a lot unfortunately but uh, I can also understand there are a lot of friends say okay if you are having a relationship as long as that uh, with that person I can't uh, I can't be uh, having a connection with you anymore but if it's okay and if you if you are uh, leaving him or her and you uh, are in need then I am there for you that's also uh, a possibility also jealousy is something like that eh? it's uh, especially for younger people uh, if uh, if you have a relationship and uh, the person is very controlling and very jealous you can think oh uh, the jealous you can confuse that with love because uh, he's so into you and he's so scared that someone else uh, would take your place 
that uh, that must be a sign of love. But it's actually not like that. He is just controlling you. He just wants to uh, have you uh, and, uh, looking at the uh, ground and no connection with other men. And uh, if uh, if uh, someone flatters with you, you can't uh, you can do anything about it. Eh? You're just normal and. If you say uh, hi and uh, another one says hi and it's just normal behavior, then if you can get home, uh, yeah, then you can maybe an argument uh, because of it. Well, nothing happened. Well, it can be that in the future, you, if you see, see a nice person, you think, okay, I'm going to look the other way because otherwise if maybe if the, uh, the person says to me, uh, hi, how are you or something, and then I have an argument at home, I'm, I'm just uh, doing if I don't uh, see the person. So uh, the jealousy is not uh, to be confused with love. If he wants to know where you are all the time and he wants to take control in that way uh, of you, that's also a sign of control and that's also a sign of narcissism. Uh, I know situations from clients and uh, someone has, uh, the narcissist has installed uh, everywhere uh, cameras. Uh, in the living room and then he called uh, when he was at work he called her and he said to her uh, where are you and she had a, a white background and she said i'm just in my in my room in my sleeping room and then uh, he said okay go downstairs i want to see you wave at the at the camera and then she did it she went uh, downstairs and she waved at the camera and uh, that's not a good sign she uh, she said, but yeah, he wants to know where I am because he has very uh, abandoning issues and uh, yeah, attachment style problems and everything. But that's not your problem. It's uh, because uh, your respect, your respect, and you have a, a need for privacy, a need for uh, uh, autonom autonomically uh, behavior, and just being yourself. And he needs to trust you. And you, it is not that you. Every time you have to prove that you are can, you can be trusted. You are also always busy with proving yourself. Well, because a narcissist projects every time, it, it can be that he is the one who cheats, that he is the one who uh, not can be trusted. So hold that in count. The more uh, the focus is on you, the less the focus you can have on him. I'm not saying that you have you need to be uh, paranoia now uh, that he maybe uh, can do uh, something, but uh, be aware of the things he turn around and be aware of the hypocrisy that uh, is in that situation. Because if you control him, and then it's not normal, eh? then then he gets angry. And uh, but putting every, everywhere cameras. Uh, checking each other. I know people who have uh, spyware on the computer. I know people who have a spyware on the phone, uh, GPS uh, on the, like a magnetic. You can you can have um, you can have uh, an iron magnetic GPS. And you can put it in the car if your car is on the street. He can uh, come at night in your car and click a GPS under your car. You don't know. And he follows you everywhere. But also exes now, what you can be aware of is uh, like that spy things. Um, it's it's like WhatsApp. If I if I have your WhatsApp, we can have connection with each other, and uh, maybe I can send you a picture. So I send you a picture, and you open it, and then you see a text. Oh, it didn't open. Try again, and then you see the real picture. But you didn't know that the first one you opened, you uh, there was a spyware on it and that opened your location. So on your phone is now your location is open and the person who sent it you can easily track you every time where you are. And then you say, oh, you sent me a picture, but I can't open it. Eh? I just see text and then you see just normal text. Oh, it can open or, or something really strange that you think, oh, it's normal, it's, it's a, a fault, eh? it's a, something, uh, oh, this, this couldn't open because of fault 613 or something. And then you say, oh, this, this didn't work. And, and he sent you again, and then you, you see the, the picture, and then you think, oh, did one, this was the picture he wanted to send, so, oh, th thank you, what a funny picture. Yeah, but now your locations are on. And uh, I, I think 
if you have a controlling uh, uh, partner, if you have a controlling narcissist, watch out for these uh, yeah, uh, kind of things. Eh? It's a, there are more and more technical things uh, 10, 15 years ago. You only have the spyware and you, you, you didn't have and the cameras cost a lot of money. And now for uh, 10 euros or something, you can everywhere uh, sound, you can in a, in a pen, you can have uh, uh, a camera or a, a, a speaker or a microphone or something. Yeah, you had that 10, 15, 15 years ago, but it was very expensive. Who buys that? But now it's so cheap that everybody can do that. And it's very scary because imagine that you, you, you can't have even in your living room a normal uh, conversation with your mother on the phone because uh, and, and say something negative about him or something because he is always listening with you. That makes you very paranoid. But uh, those things happen and uh, it starts to control. So watch out if you're getting to know someone and you're getting uh, the person getting more and more control of you. But also if you, um, if you are getting scared. Even if he didn't touch you in any way, if he is uh, uh, emotionally abusive, but he uh, makes you scared, uh, uh, it can also be a, a, a sign of the future that it can be physical violence also. Watch out for that behavior. If you are getting scared in your relationship, that's not healthy. That's unequal. Uh, you, you shouldn't be scared of, uh, for your partner. He isn't scared of you. You, don't, you shouldn't be scared of him. So it's, it's, there, little things are coming up. So it's, uh, when you are in the beginning... Mostly it starts with shouting. Yeah, then it's the first time and uh, they get uh, verbally abusive. That's also also already abuse. But we all get angry sometimes or raising our voice. Everybody uh, does that one time. But it's in a, with a narcissist, it's in another way. It's like uh, when, when they get violent. When he points a finger at you and say... Uh, uh, listen carefully, eh? you don't know who we are dealing with, eh? and uh, that, that kind of thing, eh? that he, uh, or uh, punching the walls or something, shouting very hard, punching the walls, that's uh, a very um, alpha male uh, behavior, saying, uh, look what I can do to you, and you feel, okay, this is not normal, he can explode, he doesn't have himself under control. If he never uh, takes responsibility for his actions and always blame other people and it's never his fault, it's also a sign of a narcissistic uh, abuse. Uh, he doesn't look himself in the mirror and say, okay, this uh, I'm going to change about myself because I am, I'm sorry for this. Uh, he's not going to change because he, he don't think he's somewhere in fault. He thinks even when someone uh, is very physically abusive, in an extreme way, he, those people even say, okay, but uh, she made me do it and uh, I'm really not like that. And I know someone who uh, does more uh, and, and, and uh, more destructive things to his partner and I only hit her in the face and I, or I, okay, I punched her in the face with my fist, but she didn't, uh, but I drove her to the hospital. Also, it's something that uh, uh, very uh, many times happening, uh, that, um, that the man is uh, physically abusing the woman, and uh, then the woman needs to go to the hospital, and then the abuser takes the woman to the hospital. So that the woman gets very confused. So on one hand, he's, very, uh, he's, a, he's an abuser, he's, uh, he's bad, he's unsafe, he's dangerous. And on the other hand, he's very caring, safe, sweet, and I can rely on him. Uh, I have nowhere to go and nobody helps me, but he is helping me. And that's the very dangerous uh, thing that, you, that he is a saver and he is, um, he is uh, destroying you. So he is the uh, perpetrator, but, but on the other hand, he's also your rescuer. So... Those things in one uh, situation makes you feel very confused because what side are you believing? Eh? And, and then you think, who, who is he? And it's just 
in what kind of situation or mindset are you? What do you want to believe? Do you want to believe the good side? Do you want to believe the bad side? And most of the time, uh, victims or of uh, domestic violence and narcissistic abuse want to see the good sides. Want, because they think also about the family or the financial situation, uh, the destructive uh, moments that can uh, happen if, if she leaves, what it means to the children if, uh, if she leaves, uh, court situations, uh, everything what, uh, what, uh, uh, what it happened with the divorce. It can be so very traumatic, so very much problems that you can, for the, for the rest and for the peace, you can better say, okay, I'm trying to deal with this because if I'm leaving him, it's even getting worse than I'm uh, in the situation where I am now. So I decide to stay with him. And if you decide to stay, it's better to focus on the situation that he takes you to the hospital than the situation that he beats you up. So where are you focusing? And so it, it's, it's like a, a kind of a mechanism to protect yourself. Eh? So you think, okay, I was beaten up. I, had, I needed to go to the hospital, but there was nothing wrong. Eh? I was going to the hospital and I didn't have anything that uh, has its consequences for long term. Uh, it will heal. And eh? so you, you make it small. And the narcissist is also uh, talking like that. Eh? You, you would say something like, Oh, but I know someone who has uh, broken uh, the legs and uh, she was in a wheelchair. Or I know someone who killed her wife and I didn't do that. And I, but I could have had, I could have had, and, uh, but I didn't. I drove you to the hospital. So for her, it's like a safety to say, okay, what happened is not so bad. And what he did was, okay, he made it all up. And she gets so weak on the moment uh, he drives her to the hospital. She gets so weak that she, um, she thinks by herself, oh, uh, he's not so bad. So this, the, 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 the situation that he takes me to the hospital must uh, say that he is a good man. And he exploded because I said something. And he's going to say, yes, you made me do it. And you're going to doubt yourself. You think, okay, but I see it as a sweet man. He drives me to the hospital, he, he cares for me, he looks at me and he's uh, talking to the doctors and uh, doing the papers and is very caring, are you okay, are you okay, there's everything. And you think, okay, that, that's confusing, I must be, there must be something wrong with me. Because if he's really that bad, he would never take me to the hospital. So she gets confused, she's scared to leave him, so it's good for her to minimalize the abuse eh? and, uh, and go focus on the good signs and the good things and for especially to, uh, to look at her behavior in the future that she's uh, not so... Uh, and he promised her, maybe to him even, but also to herself, that in the future she wouldn't be so... Uh, negative or setting boundaries and she would be careful so the boundaries are getting uh, more and more invisible and uh, to the point that uh, he's swimming in a boundaryless sea of yeah of there's no boundary and I can do what I want maybe you know and uh, it's this is like a little bit like a Stockholm syndrome I don't know if you know it but it's that's uh, a story that came out in 1973 in Stockholm happened really it's a true story and um, there was I think three three men and maybe one woman who uh, robbed a bank and they took uh, four men for women and uh, men uh, hostage and uh, with a gun on their head there are pictures of it and I don't know how long it took, three days or something. So uh, they took those people hostages. And uh, yeah, they, they say to the, to the people, okay, uh, if you don't give me money that and that time, we will shoot uh, the hostages. So uh, that's a very scary uh, situation, especially because it took so long. So uh, at the end, the police came and uh, they um, overruled the situation. They took the prep perpetrators away and uh, the victims are free. And uh, yeah, so the perpetrators need to go to the court. 
But what you think happened on the whole psychology of the victims? The victims were uh, um, isolated, were uh, hostages, were taken hostages, couldn't get away. But they they did it. They did uh, when they need to go to the toilet. Uh, the perpetrators took their, uh, the people to the toilet. They get food. They make a little talk. And uh, yeah, but the their lives depended on the uh, on the perpetrators. So on the other hand, they were the saviors eh? because they give uh, they give uh, them uh, they can they care for the people. Eh? So they get food and everything, and they uh, they could kill them, but they didn't. And for for those people, for the hostages, it's like they they have a kind of mechanism that you can't hate your savior. Someone who is, uh, has you under control and have the power to let you die or to let you live and uh, let you go to the toilet and eat. It, it's a good way to uh, think about yourself and say, okay, this is the person uh, who I ca can lay on to because this is the person who decides whether I live or whether I die. And what happened, everything is over and they live. So they feel, felt such a guilt uh, that the, the perpetrators need to go to court. They felt very guilty because they say they didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve to be uh, punished. So they go to the court and they, uh, there are pictures of it also. And they go to court and they try to uh, minimize the punishment for the perpetrators. So they did a good word to the judge and say, okay, eh, it wasn't that bad and they don't deserve it because we can go to the toilet. And uh, yeah, and, and everything in that, uh, what, what, what happened there. And so if someone is, uh, if someone has the life in your hands and he is, on the one hand, he's a rescuer and on the other hand, he's a perpetrator, then uh, you're getting a kind of confused because where do you need to focus on? And what in Stockholm happened, they, they focused on the good things because that's the best things to do. Because if you uh, look at the bad things and you think, okay, he's the perpetrator, I, uh, I hate him. If you hate him, then maybe you don't take the food. Eh? And now, uh, yeah, it's, it's better for your psychology to uh, focus on the good things. And it's strange, but if, you, uh, if they uh, look at the bad sides and you say to, to those people yeah you're a little bit crazy to think like that and to go to the court with them because they had a gun on your head and they used you to get money and your life was uh, in, in, in danger and then they would say well, what we could go to the toilet huh? we had uh, food and they were friendly at some times and uh, and then the people asked, but were you didn't you weren't scared or something? Yes, we were very scared, but that doesn't matter. It's it's just like when you are uh, a baby, when you are an infant, and you laying in bed, and you we people we can sit, we can put our he head head uh, uh, straight. Eh? At that moment, if you cry and you need food, you are dependent on your uh, on your parent. And doesn't matter how bad your parent is, you always think uh, you are focused on the good side of your parent because the parent is going to decide if you live or if you die. Eh? If 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 no, nobody comes, and yeah, then, then you die. If nobody takes care of you, then you die. So you are very uh, dependent on the adult people, and I think that's uh, that's a little bit. Uh, the history that that's deep inside us that we say okay we need to uh, look at the good things to the people who are having our lives in his hands and that that's uh, the mechanism that plays in su such uh, situations like uh, Stockholm syndrome when in, when someone has his life in the hands focus on the good things that's Stockholm syndrome so yeah, it's it's normal. That's also a sign when when people are getting divorced eh? and the, the children always think it's their fault. It's my responsibility because many children can't look at the parent as okay. This is a bad parent. 
especially around, uh, before the puberty, before adolescent, uh, they can't get, they can see their parents as bad. Because if you see your parents bad, yeah, then who's going to take care of you? Your life is depending on them. So there are a lot of people, a lot of children, who have a, a kind of a responsibility and guilt when the parents are divorced. You think, you are not to blame, you are not. And they think, mm, maybe if I was a little bit sweeter, or maybe if I didn't was, uh, yeah, was uh, so uh, argument, making arguments and making lots of noise, maybe my parents wouldn't uh, divorce. But it's, it's a mechanism, it's a mechanism. They took care of me. Those people are important, so it's better to uh, have my vision in a good way about the person. So that's a little bit with Stockholm, but that's a little bit also with narcissism. When a narcissist has you under control and makes you scared, then he has you under control. So you, you uh, on the one hand, when he takes you to the hospital, and on the other hand, he's beating you up. That's very scary. Because you, 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 your life is in his hands. Yeah, he, he decides when he stops. And uh, it's your, uh, yeah, your situation. Who let, let, how far do you let it go? Yeah, you, 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 can't, you can't stop it. It's just waiting. Waiting till it passed. And waiting uh, yeah, how, it's, uh, how the damage uh, is. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's, that's very uh, uh, confusing. So it's... Good that you always stay in connection with your with your parents, with your friends, so that uh, you have a, a feedback and you have someone who says to you, "This is not normal behavior." Because if you are so uh, hypnotized and so confused, that it's dangerous. Someone needs to say to you, "This is abuse," and then you can. Uh, it's best to go away because it's only getting worse. But if you want to stay, but also you have uh, in that situation someone to talk to. Someone to t if you, I know several, I have clients who, who say, okay, I have so many reasons to stay that I wait till my, my uh, children are older and then I go away. And I can blame them because I know also situations uh, from, from clients who broke up, who divorced, and uh, have a lot of problems with the children for years. Very, very many. Uh, it's not easy also. So the moment you feel very scared and not safe in your own house, hold it in account, it only is getting, getting worse and worse. And the control was getting worse. And the boundaries are getting less of you. And you're getting, you are getting hypnotized. Eh? You're going to believe that it's normal. That it's normal. But you need to talk to someone. You need to talk to someone and uh, so you can talk about it and you open your eyes to get out of the hypnotizing and to, to get out of the gaslighting. So that's important for the safety of yourself, of your children, but also of the mindset of your parents and of your, of your friends. But believe me, there are many people who are worried about you and there are many people who... Uh, yeah, who see what's going on. Even if you don't see it yourself, they see it, they see it come on coming. And uh, yeah, most of the time when it's over, yeah, they know, okay, eh, how bad must it be for my f uh, family and to uh, see that and to see it coming, but they, they couldn't do anything about it.